So you can imagine that before uh, data became available through experiments like the uh, Global Atmospheric Research Program GARP in the 70s and the part of it uh, was GATE GARP Atlantic Tropical Experiment, people were just assuming that uh, deep convection was just made of these hot towers rising all the way to the top of the atmosphere without knowing the details. Now we can easily go online and find all kinds of data for uh, outgoing long wave uh, radiation and winds and geopotential and so on and plot these things and make lots of statements about uh, the um, weak uh, temperature gradient, the convection, uh, the strong uh, gradients here and the wave structure. Uh, we can also find reanalysis products which merge these data with dynamical models and provide all kinds of information in the vertical as well uh, as the horizontal and so on. So you can imagine what would it would be li it was like before so much data became available. So now we can talk about um, structures of convection, the moving features, what happens when MJO tries to cross the maritime continent, uh, why it gets deflected to the south uh, on some occasions and how the ITCZ moves uh, and so on and so forth. Um, so out of all that recent knowledge came this detailed uh, structure of uh, the mesoscale convective system. Uh, there is, there are some ideas uh, before that uh, even things like the Walker cell and the Hadley cell could be explained in terms of these convective processes alone without, uh, on, and waves without considering the details of how the convection, the waves and dynamic circulation are actually coupled. But it's worth looking at in some detail at this uh, MCS, this is the buzzword uh, acronym uh, Mesoscale Convective System. We are looking at a cross section, looks like many details but it's actually fairly straightforward. So if you look at the height uh, from uh, let's say the surface where the rain is being received, uh, the biggest discovery at some point was that the uh, convection, deep convection does go all the way to the top of the atmosphere but then there is a much much larger area of a stratified region okay this is a uh, stratiform deck as it is called does rain but stratiform rain is very different than the intense rain you get in the deep cumulus convection system but the amounts are almost similar which means the condensational heating that is shown here in cumulus versus the stratiform deck uh, are almost the same and there is the anvil cloud sitting on the other side um, also receiving cloud material from this region because over here you don't have a direct lift of moisture from uh, the boundary layer or from the surface so it's only being supplied from here uh, from the convective region. Uh, in each region what the rain once it gets below the freezing level uh, evaporates in the dry uh, air so there is uh, evaporative uh, cooling uh, in addition to the uh, uh, condensation heating you have to consider that as well. So the rainfall amounts in the convective region and stratiform region are almost the same as I said and there are uh, energy exchanges happening of course there is short wave and long wave at the top of the cloud which is almost at the top of the atmosphere but there is also long wave coming down to the surface when you go to the edge of the stratiform deck uh, and there is a long way from the surface uh, getting into the stratform deck uh, here. Um, there are also radiative uh, effects that are uh, going on which is much further uh, was realized much later. So if you look at the profiles in this region AA, BB and CC you can see that there is the net heating of uh, condensation and evaporation showing this structure in the convective plume uh, with daytime uh, radiative heating here which can create instability. You are heating at the lower level, you can obviously create uh, instability 
and there is cooling at the top because uh, the uh, energy can escape uh, uh, or get reflected up here so there is radiative cooling at night time you don't have radiative heating at the uh, uh, boundary layer below but you have loss at the top so you can see that the diurnal cycle of the radiative heating and cooling is an important part of this uh, process of creating uh, instabilities and contributing to the uh, instability processes needed for convection. Right? Uh, if you go into the stratiform deck, then you see that the structure is quite different. The evaporative cooling dominates below the freezing level. Uh, you can think of it as the bottom of the cloud and uh, is that true let me confirm that later okay and cumulative heating obviously is much smaller and uh, you can see that the uh, nighttime cooling and the daytime warming also have very different structures than in the deep thick uh, clouds here so the uh, reflectivity and the uh, transmittivity of the short wave radiation itself is uh, very different uh, in the two regions um, radiative processes are different and once you go beyond the region where there is stratiform rain then uh, you don't have condensational heating you just have radiative uh, processes happening okay so if you integrate this whole thing over a mesoscale convective system uh, you see that that is the daytime and nighttime uh, radiative uh, balance pro radiative heating processes and this is the convective and evaporative heating processes and now we have this um, top heavy heating structure that we implicitly used for forcing waves without saying where it actually uh, came from right so this is really important and it turns out that uh, the rainfall processes that actually reach the surface and uh, the radiative processes and the convergence, evaporation, etc. actually have um, a surface heat flux exchange signal uh, at the bottom which uh, was uh, observed during toga core and jasmine which happened uh, in 1992, uh, 93 and uh, 99. So in the undisturbed, disturbed and net regions, uh, you can see that the short wave is obviously large, uh, latent heat loss, sensible heat loss, which is typically much smaller uh, on land. It can be much larger than on the ocean, but these are land, these are the ocean data. Uh, sorry, this is the long wave, this is the latent heat, uh, which is much, much larger than uh, both of them, and this is the uh, stability parameter and this is the total uh, heat exchange so you can see that in the undisturbed there is a heating in the disturbed there is a loss from the surface which means it goes into uh, destabilizing the atmosphere and that's uh, the net okay and that's jasmine which has a similar uh, behavior okay so there is a surface uh, flux exchange the question is then how do the surface flux exchanges, uh, the boundary layer processes uh, affect the free tropospheric uh, processes in terms of moisture supply uh, and so on. Okay, just make sure I said everything right uh, in this case. Okay, so we'll come back and uh, look at the comparison of observed waves and the waves we have been looking at so far from theory. But uh, remember that. Uh, mesoscale convective system cross-section you should get very familiar with the processes that are included in there that are going to be important later on 